the solid agassi on the But the way he's overhitting at the moment, it's almost as if his racket's a little too loosely strung and the ball's trampolining off it. Rios not having those problems. Yeah. Certainly not. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. Pete Sampras was talking after his defeat by Thomas Muston. He said, when I'm not playing here, I just find the balls fly on me. So it's a very dry atmosphere here. Um, remember, earlier in the week, I haven't discovered what it is today. When it was hotter than it was today, the humidity was only 20 percent. Yes, well, the humidity in the, in the desert is seldom high. Well, uh, funnily enough, after a month of rain, I would have thought it's probably a little higher than it usually is, but that still doesn't mean that it's humid. Well, he may have to do a lot of scurrying, as eager as he seems, uh, Rios, if uh, Corder can just remain reasonably consistent, because he's a much shorter man than Corder. And, of course, two hands on the backhand side. That will restrict his reach further. Lovely pass. Well, it's his day for the angle. We saw one forehand when he was off court a while ago, and then a two-hand across court. Now that, obviously feeling the ball well. Fed up with himself, Peter Corder. Love back to Juice. And again, just having to compromise a little bit there, Corder, not hitting it quite as flat and uh, cupping the ball, being a bit more uh, conservative, gives Rios the opportunity really to get into these points. First double fault of the match, and here's Marcelo Rios now with the point for the double break. Maybe he's going to win 6 2 6 2 this time. Second ace. And you can see the reach problem that uh, Rios has. And that left-handed swinger gets the ball in court.
So they can double. And the third juice. Oh, that's a brilliant shot. Absolutely fabulous. He's in really dangerous form. That's a miss hit from Corder, and here he's having to chip a little bit just to get it in play. Not often you'll see that from Corder. Hit a little uh, tentatively and just gives Rios the scope for his genius at the moment. Thank you very much. And Marcelo Rios turning on a virtuoso performance, displaying a rich variety of skills and shots. And it is 4 1. Well, the great difference is that he's been given time. And the Australian quarter didn't, although. Uh, it was a slightly hesitant start by Corda, but Rios was just a bundle of nerves. Today the nerves are uh, exorcised, and Corda not able to drum up the inspiration. There's no doubt about it. He's playing without really a goal in mind, without anything very definite in sight, like the, the Australian title. Number one is not uppermost in his mind, or perhaps whilst he thinks about it, he's... Uh, he knows this crowd is expecting him, Corder, to play as a major champion, and that's undermining him a little bit. And, of course, Rios somewhat in the shadow because uh, all eyes, all cameras will be on Corder, and that'll suit Rios. Except all eyes in Chile. No doubt this match is being shown live. Huge national figure. Gosh, 11 unforced errors from Peter Corder, and... We've only had five games. Quarter last year was seven and six against left-handers. He lost to Mark Woodford twice. This year he's beaten Rios and Scott Draper twice. No losses. Peter Gordon must be saying to himself, well, all right, I'm playing like a drain, but then so did Brzezetsky at the start of his match, and he won. Mios <laughs> at the moment. He's got a... It's not a racket in his hand, it's a magic wand. Doing everything right at the right times. Lost on serve uh, through one point. Yes, the massive total. One point, one game. One player out there at the moment. That's a pity. So, so all of us. Come on, Peter.
things for certain, though. The year of the left-hander is uh, continuing. Already Rosetsky, of course, through. We're going to have two left-handers in the semis, possibly three if Musta beats Medvedev later. Now, how come you're on to this year of the left-hander? I thought that was my line. Great play again, but what a friend's fault but to pinch your best lines. <laughs> I mean, Rios has won titles, Korda, Rosetsky, Vanisevic, Seamerink. Anybody I've forgotten? No, that's about it. Mind you, I guess if he was listening to us now, Andre Agassi would say, Poof, what a load of rubbish. It's the year of Agassi. Could well be. Well, he'd like to have notched that point, Rios. Just like to notch any point, particularly game ones. I thought he was staying in the uh, steered mode here, but uh, that one's hit with a little bit more penetration. As whilst he steers, Rios can get him back. Well, that should at least give Peter Corda some comfort. Almost certainly too late to salvage the first set, but he must now look forward to the second. 5-2. Johnson, award-winning architect. Eight third against Thomas Enquist. Is Rios serving for the first set against Korda? That's the secret for, for Peter. Slip, slip, fall, get up, and win the point. Yes, we've seen quite a few players go over here. A little bit of uh, grit that there is on the court makes it quite tricky, particularly uh, behind the baseline. Yes. And it's the unexpectedness of it, because you expect to have a pretty firm footing on these courts. Well, Rios got caught in no man's land there. 
Might have been better off uh, coming in, but uh, having played this shot, just a little hesitation and caught a wrong foot at him. Both men consistently win over 80% of their service games. They're not in the Rosetsky class. And quarter generally just a few percentage points above Rios. The first time in the match, Rios facing break point. Looking to up the pace, and he ups his head instead, caught it. Customary bar by, uh, or genuflection by Rios. Set point. So much better from quarter. A real purpose about that point. Yes, good control too, because uh, Rios's one-hander here was not a bad one. Again, the wrong footing volley. A man, of course, who won the Australian doubles with uh, Stefan Edberg. And a lot of success at the Australian. Well, it's a continual wrong footing now. And Rios at the slippery end of things. Second break point. What's really impressed me today about Rios is the quality of shots he's played when stretched wide. There was another beauty there. Yes, everything's uh, going well, really, from the moment he served his love service game and then broke quarter. Everything's working. You'll just never know had quarter held on, put a bit of pressure on whether it would have gone as smoothly. finding the line here. He really has found some angles. Second set point. Well, that time he didn't quite control the one-hander as well, and he also waited to see whether Corder might wrong-foot him. set points. Now this is a third break point for quarter. Oh. 
Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope that this is the uh, little bit of ignition or spark that Corder needs, because it's all uh, a little too one-sided, our praise at the moment. Yes, if he could hold serve here, it would become interesting this first set. 3-5. Quarter's turn to play a cracker on the stretch. I have a feeling he was almost surprised at his success here. Number three. Yeah, oh, gosh, that was a late call. Perhaps Niles Graf was surprised by the bleep. Gorda records his first love service game of the match. And a very different complexion on the scoreline now. Was 5-1, now 5-4. Although Rios will have a second chance to serve it out. back inside, having been left out uh, in Guyana when Robert Croft was included as the second spinner, the perennial problem facing him and selectors of how to get five bowlers into the side if they want to play a specialist wicketkeeper. Caddick uh, suffered at Headingley last summer against the Australians. It transpired to be a mistake. I think the general opinion was he would have bowled well there. Oh, that's lovely, lovely timing. Really is a good stroke from Lamb. Quickly the position, and he made no no mistake. Well, Fraits just another half volley. Now, got to settle into a pattern of bowling on a wicket on good wickets in Test match cricket. You've got to set a field. You've got to look to bowl to it. Order of the day is line and length off stump outside and probe away. Played hard follies at this level aren't good enough. And Greg Rosetsky awaits either Thomas Muster or Andre Medvedev. He really is in the wrong footing mode. Yeah, Srinas is going to be uh, cursing the court as much as uh, Korda. It was difficult to get back and cover these. Now that Korda's hitting it a bit more smoothly and a bit more powerfully. Srinas' problem is, of course, he can't uh, deliver too big a serve at this time.
right in the corner. Jim Corder look as if to say, well, you seem to have woken up now. Why didn't you wait until the second set? No big serves in the last game, none in this. And uh, although he's got a good serve and averages uh, over five aces a match, Rios, just watch this shortened swing of his. That just limits him a little bit, limits his power. Brings, brings the racket right through to his waist level there. Oh, extraordinary. And 5 1. Quarter now with two points for five all. Hey. Isn't it amazing on break points how many players who hardly ever serve and volley always serve and volley? Yes, there's uh, something very psychological about it. And uh, they're often successful, too. <laughs> Crucially getting in both first serves. Just a second ace. And it brings up Rios's second, uh, I beg your pardon, third set point, two in his previous service game. It's wide. And Rios doing so well eventually to close it out. He's telling umpire Lars Graf he's got a string fraying and he wants to change his racket. Again, virtually a, a break point, love 30. The serve volley, but then Corder tends to do it a bit more than Rios in the course of a match. Well, you could just see the wrong footer come, couldn't you, from that... Uh, angle that we had. Chino, they call him in Chile. Now if he could win this, it might take their minds off General Pinochet just for the moment. point right at the start of the second set. to play catch up again in the second set so nearly caught up in the first but it's a, it's an awful handicap
Yes, he just can't string them together, Corder. His uh, mind's half there. That's his, that's his problem. And I think it really is partly doing so much at the Australian, as I said before, but also just the expectation, perhaps, uh, how people look so differently upon somebody who's won a major. It happened with Rafter. It has almost happened with Rosetsky as a result of his final at the US Open. And it's uh, happening now to Corder. He's been around. He's not a lot different than he was. He just happened to string it together at the Australian. Same old Corder. And he's not sure he can produce. And that may be one of the causes here. And the su two surprising statistics there, of course, Corder's first serve percentage and those 17 unforced errors. Listen for it. Yeah. You know, the, the big serve. And there's obviously a lot more to it than that, but uh, with the serve flowing and scoring as uh, often, it becomes a lot easier. My goodness, okay. just uh, taking the wrong club out of the bag. Just can't, can't find it. Just that brief passage in the first set. And that's a third love service game for Rios. It's just referring to Rosetsky's serve. If uh, Cora suddenly now could come up with uh, a score of aces, even not that many, his, uh, his whole game would take on a, a different hue. If you weren't with us earlier, we were awaiting confirmation, of course, but uh, it did seem to us that Rosetsky set a new record of 146 miles an hour with one of his aces, breaking his previous record of 143. Mind you, there are official and some unofficial clocks, and uh, we'll have to get confirmation that it was an official one. A little late, but a good call. Yes, this uh, clock here does seem a little high, I must say. Well, again, the approach shot by Cordo, which uh, at his best, and certainly in the Australian, would have had Rios stretching on the backhand side. He plays right down the middle here. Comfortable for Rios. <laughs> well, it could be just one of those days for Peter Cordo. Point for three love. Oh. 
There's a little clenched fist from Marcelo Rios as if to say, I think I've got him this time. A set and three love with two breaks he ought to have. Korda has the skills to turn it around, not displaying them today. Rosetsky. He's the first Briton ever to reach the semi-finals of a Super 9. Rosetsky awaits Muster or Medvedev. The winner of this awaits Agassi or Gamble. Well, the statistics there show some of the story. Rios winning 62% of his uh, second serves. Now, if he could do that all year, he'd uh, achieve miracles. He normally will uh, win only about 52, 53%, so that's way high. And, of course, what it suggests is just like that, that Corda's not returning well, not getting into the points, not putting pressure on the Rios second serve. It's hardly a damaging second serve. resigned look about Calder in that last game. Yes, I don't think there's going to be a lot of resistance now. Sad, really, because, of course, the number one in the world is up for grabs uh, here if Korda should uh, win this tournament, Sampras having lost. But in many ways, I think Korda's right. Uh, Sampras still, in most people's eyes, is number one. Oh! Well, if Korda could suddenly do shots like that, anything's possible, but... Uh... It's a great stretch. Fourth ace from Corda, and at least he's uh, prevented the ignominy of a love set, which was looking distinctly possible. Rios up in the morning to get the results of those matches in our tech service. The Australian might have been a nightmare, but this one is turning out to be a bit of a dream for uh, Rios. Yes, it's Cordo who's having the nightmare. It's, uh, so, uh, almost certainly now, barring a most extraordinary pattern of events, Pete Sampras will enjoy weeks 101 and 102 as number one, because of course, that's a let. Um, because of course, uh, Next week, 
The Lipton Championships begins on the Friday, and that's a 10-day tournament. Oh, that was a mile out. Yeah, I think uh, maybe the line judge unsighted. Definitely. doing it at Bjorkman and uh, Rosetsky here. He hasn't lost a point on serve in this set. No, he's won, in fact, 16 straight points and he served uh, Rios because he was 15-40 down at the end of the last set, won four points there. So he's on a real roll. He may not get a chance to extend that uh, sequence there. May never do it again against uh, a player ranked two in the world. This is the second and third ranked left-hander in the world. We've already seen the second win a match tonight. One Mr. Rosetsky. Quarter convinced that was out. I don't know why, because it might just prolong the agony. Of course, a man now truly inspired. I just hope this doesn't leave too much of a scar on uh, Corder. Yeah, sort of persuade him, well, I've had my finest hour and it's all downhill from here. Certainly hopes not, because he has so much more to contribute. So double fault. And it's two match points. <laughs> and the smile from Rios. I don't think he can believe how easy it's been. And yet even then, Corder had two points to level at five all in the first, having been five one down. Well, it'll be a good exercise in uh, character building if uh, Rios had to serve for it. Oh. And if Corder wins this match, we'll discover that his middle name is Houdini. Big hand from the crowd. Pleased to see Corder offering a little bit of resistance at the end. But has he only postponed the inevitable? I certainly think so.
terrific year, of course, for the uh, South Americans, or terrific year and a half with Curtin winning uh, the French last year and Rios uh, final of the Australian. Really has given a tremendous boost. No Chilean uh, had reached a, a final since Luis Ayala in the uh, French in the late 50s. So they've had a long wait and, of course, prior to Quirton, it was Maria Bueno. Yes, no Brazilian man had ever won a, a Grand Slam. Of course, if, uh, I'm just thinking ahead. Uh, It's a super point. I think the real test comes probably during and just after Wimbledon. He's got to, uh, if he doesn't win Wimbledon, then uh, people will accept the fact that somebody else's turn has come. Because he's not likely to win the French. Although it would be good to see him have a really good go. And it may just be the inspiration he needs. because I know for Sampras and for uh, quite a number of people that elusive one, whether it's the uh, American, say, for Borg or the French for Sampras, that's the one they want most. Match points for Rios. Yes, it's a terrific performance from Rios. Yes, he was faced with a, a very much substandard quarter today, and that was disappointing to see, but let's take nothing away from Rios. He played really well. It won't lay the ghost of the Australian Open final, <laughs> although he's coming up with his own uh, cartwheels. <laughs> Anything that will make up for losing a Grand Slam final is winning a Grand Slam final, but that's yeah, a, a fine performance. Rios wins 6 4 6 2 in what just an hour and six minutes. Yes, well, all of Chile will be celebrating. He's beaten uh, the winner of a major, a recent major, too, and uh, that can only do Rios, who's a multi talented man. Shame for Corda, though, and it just never was on the court today, just but a shadow of the man who won the Australian. Yeah, let's hope that Corda can regroup and recapture that form. But look, only six unforced errors from Rios. So. He awaits either Agassi or Gamble. Rosetsky awaits either Muster or Medvedev. As I say, look up the results in the morning on sports desks. And we'll see you tomorrow night. So, was